Hi everybody, today is August 15, 2013. Well, the situation at Fukushima may get much worse, if that's even possible. Mission Impossible. Fukushima scientists brace for riskiest nuclear fuel cleanup yet. Scientists at Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant are preparing for their toughest cleanup operation yet. Two and a half years after three of the plant's reactors suffered a meltdown in Japan's worst ever nuclear power disaster. Japan's worst ever nuclear power disaster? How about the world's worst? It's dumping, what, 400 tons of radiated water into the oceans daily? That's probably more than that. That's only what they're admitting to. Not to mention the uh, radiation that's spewing into the air, circling the world. The operator to remove 400 tons of highly irradiated spent fuel beneath the plant's damaged reactor number four. Could set off a catastrophe greater than any we have ever seen, independent experts warn. An operation on this scale, says plant operator. TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Power Company, has never been attempted before and is wrought with danger. Oh yeah, they can't handle what they got now and they're going to do something worse. An uncontrolled leak of nuclear fuel could cause more radiation than the March 2011 disaster or the 1986 Chernobyl catastrophe, says consultants Michael Snyder and Anthony Fagant. Full release of unit number four spent fuel without any containment or control could cause by far the most serious radiological disaster to date. The scientists say in their World Nuclear Industry Status Report 2013. The operation has been tried before, but only with the aid of computers. This time it will be painstakingly manual process. Here's what needs to be done. More than 1,300 used fuel rods assemblies. Packing radiation 14,000 times the equivalent of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb need to carefully be removed from their cooling pool. Now number four was the building that was leaning. I believe this tangled up mess right there is the number four unit. Arnie Gunderson, a veteran U.S. nuclear engineer and director of Fairwinds Energy Education told Reuters that they're going to have a difficulty in removing a significant number of rods, especially given their close proximity to each other, which risk breakage and the release of radiation. Gunderson told Reuters that an incredibly dangerous criticality that would result if a chain reaction takes place at any point. If the rods break or even so much as collide with each other in the wrong way, the resulting radiation is too great for the cooling pool to absorb. It simply has not been designed to do so. The problem with a fuel pool criticality is that you can't stop it. There are no control rods in control, Gunderson said. The spent fuel pool cooling system is designed only to remove decayed heat, not heat from an ongoing nuclear reaction. The base of the pool where the fuel assemblies are situated is 18 meters above the ground. The pool itself is 10 by 12 meters and the rods are 7 meters under the surface of the water. One problem with that pool is it has been exposed to air in the 2011 catastrophe. When its roof was blown off by the explosion, the operation is urgent because even a minor earthquake could trigger an uncontrolled fuel leak. Here they have a general view of the cover installation for the spent fuel removed from the cooling pole is pictured at the number four reactor building at TEPCO Tsunami Kripo Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Plant. The removal process is due to begin in November with TEPCO predicting it will take approximately a year. Although TEPCO is confident the operation will be a success, some experts are more skeptical. TEPCO is currently failing to contain radioactive water seepage in another part of the facility. Two empty fuel rods were removed as part of a test operation some time ago, but to jump to the conclusion that it's going to work just fine for the rest of them is quite a leap of logic, Reuters quoted Gunderson of Fairwind Energy Education as saying. Here's a current image of the facility and the cranes working. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States 
take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president. A giant steel frame currently towers over Unit 4, soon to be tasked with extracting of the fuel assemblies. Each fuel rod weighs around 300 kilograms and is 4.5 meters long. They also contain plutonium, one of the most radioactive substances known to man. The radiation builds up during the later stages of a core's operation. A former TEPCO technician told Reuters that the operation would normally be assisted by computers, but that luxury is gone. Previously, it was a computer control process that memorized the exact location of the rods down to the millimeter. And now they don't have that. It has to be done manually, so there is a high risk that they will drop and break one of these fuel rods, he said. He is also expecting many issues for TEPCO ahead as the process is estimated to take a year. The scientist's task is not made easy by the fact that the building is also prone to corrosion from salt water. Removing the fuel rods is just one part of the cleanup operation, itself expected to take around four decades, 40 years. According to the IAEA, during which any number of other problems could arise. The fuel rod scare comes as TEPCO is currently failing to contain radioactive water seepage in another part of the facility. Itself a growing issue with no concrete solution apart from building a special underground wall, but with water quantity building up at an alarming rate, the most likely version of events is that the radioactive water will simply have to be released into the Pacific at some point. And they have done that in the past, deliberately released radioactive water. According to TEPCO, there is no perfect solution. If you build a wall, of course, the water is going to accumulate there, and there is no other way for the water to go but up or sideways and eventually lead to the ocean, a nuclear engineer who has worked at several TEPCO plants told Reuters. So now the question is, how long do we have? The situation is not made easier by the fact that Japan is a seismically active island. Earthquakes keep striking at random, and even a small tremor could set in motion a catastrophic chain of events. Cleanup costs at the nuclear plant are projected to be in the billions of dollars. No, it's going to be one and a half trillion dollars, if not more, as the facility's operator has failed to meet its targets, leading to increased public distrust and forcing the government to step in. Forcing the government to step in? They said they were going to. They have not yet done it. In the two years since the March 2011 meltdown, the cost of the cleanup project could be spiraling out of control financially. If the cleanup is not carried out, it could cause incalculable problems for Japan's economy, particularly in agriculture. They won't have an agriculture, they won't have a fishing industry, and eventually the United States won't either. They're saying that this radioactive water is, in fact, going to reach the United States within two to three years. Now, is that from the date of the meltdown or from today's date? I don't know. This radioactive water is going to collect in pools along the west coast of the United States. Pools, what are those? Tide pools. And then you have the radioactive water that's going to be going into the air from just the surface, the ocean crashing. All that salt water that you can taste and breathe along the ocean, guess what? It's going to be falling upon Oregon, Washington, California, Canada's agriculture. So it's not just going to contaminate the food we eat, but also think of what the cows are eating and other livestock. And it's been going on and covered up, but it's only going to get worse. The Institute for Industrial Science at the University of Tokyo has recently estimated that the levels of radiation along the country coastline are way above the government target. Um, and they raised those because what the government originally had as safe levels it was way beyond that, so they just raised the level, and now it's beyond that. We have detected over 20 spots around Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant with levels of radiation 5 to 10 times higher than the surrounding area, with dynameters ranging from 10 to hundreds of meters, the Institute said. And you know they're downplaying that too. TEPCO has been left to its own devices two years ago to deal with the cleanup. 
and the compensation payments to people in the contaminated region. You no, know, all these different governments right away, as soon as it happened, offered to help, and TEPCO said, no, we don't want your... The Japanese refused other people help. Russia brought in scrubbers for the water to take the radiation or part of the radiation out of the water. But evidently, that didn't work, did it? Now, with recent news of over 300 tons of contaminated water being leaked into the Pacific, see, it's not 300 tons, it's 400 tons. And I'm sure it's much more than that. So this 400 to 300 tons, whoever you want to believe, of contaminated water is leaking into the Pacific for more than two years. Now remember I told you scientists said that it was anywhere from two to three years for that radioactive water to reach the United States. The Japanese government has decided to step in. Um, what have they done? I haven't heard of anything that they've done, have you? No. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, the government ordered Fukushima plant operator, TEPCO, to bear the entire cost of the cleanup. Oh, well, yeah. where are they going to come up with one and a half trillion dollars? But also told it to get back to profitability as soon as possible through cutting costs so that it could pay off its debts. Uh, how is it going to cut off? How is it going to cut costs? By opening, starting up the other nuclear power plants there in Japan that are shut down. Real smart. The cleanup will weigh very heavily on Japan's energy consumption, however, on top of the already stringent energy austerity measures. But TEPCO has insisted it will not be able to handle the cleanup bill, which is now projected at more than $10 billion. The company has already spent $3 billion and will require a major injection of $10 billion by March of 2014, it says. Yeah, they know what the truth is. $1.5 trillion. And they've only spent $3 billion? Um, yeah. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.